Well, glory to God. Thank you, Father. God is so good. I mean, really good. <laughs> I mean, God is so good. Amen? I, I, I mean, I, I don't know about you, but there, there's just during that time, and, and really in recent weeks and months, with the, the noon times, the evening times, the different prayer times, worship times, message times, meetings times, I'm sensing a wooing of the Lord. I don't know about you, but it's, it's, like, it's like he's jealous for us. Come on, do you, do you understand that? There's, there's a, the, you know, a beloved is mine and I am his and his banner over me is love. There's, there's a wooing, there's a, a hunger in, in us, there should be a hunger and thirst, but there is, a, there, is a, there is something in God that longs to be with us. You know, in the garden we see that. He walked in the cool of the day with Adam. There was desire for fellowship. There's a place now where we, we're to walk with him and, and to and enter in with him and to be with him and to hunger and thirst or for that right standing, that right place which, which has been made available for us. But I'm, I'm sensing a wooing. I'm sensing a, a greater wooing in God, a, a jealousy, a divine jealousy that he wants us, he wants us to come, he wants us to stay, he wants us to linger. Moses would go to the, to the tabernacle of meeting. But then Moses would, would finish out his time with God, and he was called a friend of God. I mean, he was intimate with God. There was a, a in terms of an Old Testament setting, my goodness, I mean, Moses. And yet Moses would go back to the camp. But Joshua, a young man, would not depart. I mean, he looked, at, he looked at what Moses had. And Joshua didn't have all that. Moses hasn't laid hands on Joshua yet. He hasn't imparted something. You know, there's not the, st Joshua hasn't heard the statement yet, Moses is dead. But inside of Joshua, it's like, I'm not moving. I'm not going anywhere until I, I get a piece of this, until I connect with this. I see something that I want. I see something that, that, that is, I see is necessary. And I believe even in those early days that God was, was wooing Joshua. Not just for leadership or ambition or war or whatever, but, but for relationship, intimacy, to stay that little bit longer, to, to abide, not just visit. Hallelujah. And so Jesus said, if you abide in me, and my words, what? Well, how does that work? We, we talk, think about abiding in Jesus and his presence and in his face. And, but what does it mean for his word to abide in us? Because he is the word. He is the word made flesh. And so, and so the very nature and person of God the word dwells, lingers, stays, abides. Abide is not like, you don't abide in a hotel. You visit a hotel. But you abide in your home. So the word finds its home in us. Amen. And so there's something tonight that I believe that God wants to make home. It's something I believe God wants to release by his word that, that he wants to abide. This is not something that comes and goes. This is not something that visits tonight and, whoo, that was wonderful. And then, you know, you forget all about. This is something to abide. This is something so foundational, so central. Pastor talked about divine alignments. That, that came out in noontime also. A divine alignment. There are things that need to snap into line. I want you to think about something for a moment. I want you to think about the resurrection of Jesus. You think, Pastor, this is a, a little early. We haven't quite got to Easter yet. I know the year's moving fast, but, <laughs> but I want you to think about that moment. Lifeless, bloodless, bloodless body. I mean, in, in the natural sense, there's no bringing 
Jesus back. I mean, ripped to shreds, life poured out, and then, and then to, to top it all off, he yields his spirit. So that's, you know, gone. I mean, this is in the grave, dead. And I want you to think for just a moment, what all must have snapped into place and come into divine alignment? What, what kind of, I, I, I mean, what kind of power? I, I want you just to meditate on this for a moment. What kind of power did it take in that moment? I mean, we, we, can, we see what happened. We see the way the earth reacted. We see, I mean, graves split. There's all sorts of things that, that took place. I, I mean, the, 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 you know, the, those, la, those last three days, there's been all kinds of shakings. And I mean, even when, even when Jesus was in the garden and, and saying certain, I mean, he had, to, he had to pull back a little bit. He had to watch out. I mean, it, the power was, the, the functionality of what was going on on Jesus was so strong that when some soldiers showed up and said, which one of you is Jesus? All Jesus says is, I am. And bang, they hit the ground. Now, you get up and arrest him now. <laughs> I mean, he says the name of God. So much power is released. Actually, if you do a harmony of the Gospels, there was so much power that was released. There's this strange little phenomenal uh, little bit in, in the Scriptures there uh, that talks about this young guy that shows up and, and you know, and, and someone grabs his... his, his uh, you know, his wrappings, and he runs off naked, and, uh, and it's like, what? what's that in there for? Until you do a little, a little research on the shroud, which is a burial cloth. There was so much power that, that was, do you understand, the resurrection power was already starting to stir. Something was, something was starting to stir. Some, something was starting to, something was starting to stir. But, Je but Jesus had to kind of, you know, the disciples are getting a little bit big for themselves, cutting people's ears off and all sorts of stuff going on. And I think Peter was ready to die in that moment. I, I mean, you don't take out and, and in, in, in front of a, a small army, ch chop someone's ear off without knowing what kind of consequences could come. But I think he was so bold. He really thought, this is it, man. This is it. We're taking on everything. The kingdom's come. Didn't go quite how Peter thought it was going to go. <laughs> in the garden that night. All sorts of things happened next that didn't go how Peter thought it was going to go, especially the moment when he locked eyes with Jesus after denying. Oh, that, that, the heartbreak of that moment. <sighs> but then what happened next? A lot of people don't preach about what happened next. People preach about the cross. People preach about the resurrection, but not a lot of people preach about what happened between the cross and the grave uh, and the resurrection. Jesus went to hell. Now, not the eternal, long-term, forever hell that is after judgment. We understand that. But there was a, there was a hellish separation place within an Old Testament setting. We don't have time to go into all of this between Hades and paradise and the different things. And Jesus taught about this. Jesus talked about it. He gave parables which started out a certain person, which, which in that context of the day says this is a true story. This is actually what happened and, and so forth. But there, there, was, there was a yieldedness on Jesus in the grave that was so that was so submitted to death. Now, I want you to get a hold of this now. Because Jesus didn't come to go halfway. He didn't come to stop at the surface of the earth or, you know, not even down in the dirt because he was in a, in a hewn out rock, you know. Jesus' physical body was laying there, but I'm telling you, he went as far as far needed. And so when we come to the point of the resurrection, we're not just talking about somebody who died five minutes ago who could have been resuscitated. We're talking about someone who became the very central point in all of history. I, I like to say it this way. He reached out this way into time past and this way 
in a time future, and he became that central point of which all of time and sin and sickness and disease and poverty came upon him, so much so that it, it rent him. Not just the physical, external, but it rent him. So that he was no longer recognizable. And he took upon himself all of that and then gave up his spirit and breathed his last. And, and his spirit went into hell. Now, this is hard for us. It's very hard for any kind of religious mindset because people just don't want to put that on Jesus. Oh, how could you know, big wife. I mean, that, that's, the, that, that's the nature of sin. It, 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 that, that, that he really doesn't want to believe that our life from Adam onwards would cause such depth of him having to suffer and then it pleased God to bruise him. That's a hard one to reconcile. But nevertheless, Jesus was willing to go all the way to fulfill every legal requirement that was necessary. Now, we're working on something because there is a divine alignment that I believe God wants us to have. Something, something so powerful in God's word that it literally snaps everything into line in the same way that resurrection moment did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to turn in your Bibles, if you would, with me to a familiar scripture, one that I'm sure that you're very familiar with. Romans chapter 8 and verse 11 says something very profound, very powerful. There's a lot in there, and we're going to unpack some things tonight, if that's okay with you. But it says this in the Amplified Classic, it says, And if the Spirit of Him who raised up Jesus from the dead, dwells in you. Now I want you to think about this for a moment. Again, we've just meditated on, on that, that the, the depth of the death. Now let's look at the, the magnitude of the resurrection. If the spirit of him well, this is not, that, that's not then talking about Jesus. Let's unpack it for a moment. Because if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus. Okay, so the spirit of God, the spirit of God, understand this, the spirit of God. If the spirit of him, hallelujah, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. If the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells where? In you. In you. Dwells. Dwells in you. Then he who raised up Christ Jesus from the dead will also. Say also. also. Now also is an important linking word right here. If, if the resurrection power, if the same spirit that did that lives here, then, then also, we've got an also coming up. If that can do that, which is the ultimate of death. Je Je Jesus had to pay for all sin and death. There's, there, there isn't anywhere further he could have gone with it. It is the absolute ultimate death that Jesus de died. He went, he went as far as it, as it took to go to undo everything. If you want to study that out, study out Romans chapter 5, everything that Adam lost, much more what Jesus did. So Jesus did, Jesus did it and some. I mean, he went, he went further, it would seem in the intimation, he went further than, than even was necessary because that's just his nature. He's an overflow kind of a God. <laughs> but there's no mistake that the death that Jesus died was the absolute death. But now we come to this place where we see that, that what what pulled him out of there? That same spirit lives in us. Now, now we've got to get a hold of this. Because this isn't wishful thinking. This is an actual residence. This is the power of the resurrection that actually 
has come, been poured out. Romans 5, 5 says the, 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 the love of God, which is the character, the nature of God himself, it's, it's the royal law that motivates everything that God does, has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So he was poured into us and that love which makes faith and every supernatural spiritual dynamic of God work in and through our lives was poured into us. Without the love, none of that works. It's just noise. So if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then he who raised up Christ Jesus from the dead will also, what? Restore to life your mortal. Now mortal means can die. Morte, we get the word mortuary, you get the word mortgage. <laughs> well, we'll mortgage, morte, grip, it means death grip. But, but we don't, we're not going we're not gonna come under that in the name of Jesus because we're calling things paid. We're calling debt gone. We're, we're call, but, but what we've got to get a, a, an understanding of is that the world has, has a lot of death names for a lot of things that want to have a grip on you. But the resurrection, what was, what was poured out in Christ, also has names, also has descriptives. That pa- resurrection power has a job to do on the inside of us, and it's to snap into line everything that that redemptive power was poured out for. Hallelujah. And I mean, I'm talking about mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, socially. Everything in our lives, there is a divine alignment. There is a plumb line of the Word and the Spirit that, that needs to snap in a line. And there's too many people where that, that, that line's kind of doing this. And God's saying, no, come on, get in line with what's already inside of you by my Spirit. Will also restore to life your mortal, short lived, perishable bodies. So, these we understand we are a spirit, we have a soul, we live in a body. Our spirit was made righteous, brand new, perfect in God. It can't be any other way. Corinthians said he's been, we've been made one spirit with him. He is the Holy Spirit. So, by definition, he is sanctified and separated, holy from any sin. Therefore, if our spirit was still in sin, Holy Spirit couldn't live there. That's a very quick abridged version, but just to, just to answer any of those questions, your spirit, the, ju- the spirits of just men made perfect. Amen. We know the soul needs working on. How many of you recognize that? I mean, whoo, my goodness, I'm still working on that. So are you. But by, by, by the grace of God, by the, by the help of the Holy Spirit and by the word of God, we're being transformed in the same image. Amen. There is a, we're being transformed. There's a transformation taking place. Romans 12 explains that. Be not conformed to the pattern of this world, but transformed by the renewing of the mind. Hallelujah. So the soul is is being renewed in that context, and we are yielding constantly, daily. If anyone thinks they've made it, watch out. (laughs) You're about to learn something new. And the body, this physical earth suit, needs a lot of help. And God's been teaching us that. I mean, the last few weeks has been the Holy Spirit in depth teaching us. There are physical things you can do. There are chemical things that you can do. There are things that you can, foods that can go in the body, foods that shouldn't, but they're not probably really even classified in God's mind as foods. There are exercises that you can do. There are physical things that you should and shouldn't do, depending on age, circumstance, and so forth and so on. There there are spiritual things that this body responds to. There are things that you speak to. There There are virtues that are supposed to come out of your spirit, life virtues that are supposed to come up and actually flow through. And this is what we're starting to tap into here now. Now, in Ephesians 1.14, it says, talking of the Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance unto the redemption of, now listen to this, the purchased possession to his glory. What does that mean? That means, that means in the context of that verse, your supernatural body, the body that you will get in the twinkling of an eye when we meet the Lord in the air, that's already been paid for. 
That suit's, al that suit's already hanging there. That's the purchased possession. Now, why can't we have it? Why can't we have that one now? So, like, God, let me just wear that one now. Well, if you wore that one now, you'd have to go to heaven. You, you and I have to be here off by legal authority in this flesh and blood right now. Now, that's going to change at some point. And there's authority structures, and then there's rulings and reignings and all sorts of wonderful things that take place in that context. But even Jesus, when he put that one on, couldn't stay here. And so we have, a, we have to have legal flesh and blood feet in the, in the old earth suit, the, the clay jars, as it were, earthen vessels, is the word I'm looking for, that the glory may be of him, not of us. And so there's legal reason for this, and yet God says you don't have to put up with its limitations if you understand some things. I've actually put in you some things that are not only just to help you get by, but, but to cause you to be able to thrive in this body. The, the, the cells of your body actually are designed to respond to a, a manifestation of the glory of God. Now, I'm not going to go into this now, but I believe there's a, a moment I'll get uh, in some, some noontime fairly soon where, where I want to actually go into the, the blood of Jesus and then the resurrected body of Jesus which had no blood in it. Because if life is in the blood, then how is Jesus alive? There's a, there's a phenomenal little study we're going to go to and, and understand some of the, the glory of God that is, that is at work in us now. Hallelujah. But that's not where I'm going tonight. Uh -uh. So if the power of the resurrection was able to raise Jesus, three-day dead, lifeless, bloodless body, it can restore life to your morte, mortal bodies, the temporal things. There is a life force of God that is able to flow through every vein in your body. Hallelujah. Through every cell in your body and snap it in divine alignment. Hallelujah. Now, do we believe this? Now, now I want to go into something here because, because this resurrection, this is not talked about enough, especially in the context of salvation. Because if we bring people into the kingdom and, and people don't understand the resurrection, then there is a significant and serious piece missing and in fact, if, if people never hear of the resurrection and you try to lead someone to the Lord, you, you may get them to even confess the Lordship of Jesus. But if they don't understand the resurrection according to Romans, uh, in terms of the context, uh, Romans 9 and 10, and you go through that context leading up to the point of salvation, you not only confess Jesus as Lord, but you've got to believe something. And what is it that you've got to believe? According to spiritual law, you've got to believe that Jesus was raised from the dead. So people often do evangelism, miss out the whole resurrection piece. Are they even saved? If the resurrection power, faith in the resurrection has not happened, how can they believe it? If they've not believed it, you might get someone confess. Now, you can go to India and talk about Jesus, and they'll put up their hand and receive Jesus and add him to a million other gods. They'll add another Lord, another Lord, another Lord. But the resurrection changes everything. The apostle Paul said, if Christ is not raised from the dead, then we're the most pitiable of all people. This is so key. And I really believe that God wants a divine alignment. He wants this released tonight. Not just through my lips, through your lips, through your faith, through our interaction with the Holy Spirit in this place. And whatever else he wants to do in a few minutes, I'm telling you, because I do truly believe that there is something of divine alignment that is taking place in this place tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So here's a question for you. What raised Jesus from the dead? Because I used to look at things and I've saw, you know, and you've seen, 
and, and sorry if I'm going to mess this up for you, but, but there was a, a, a man who, who was a musician and he used to do all sorts of uh, videos and had one of these ones with this boxing match in hell and, and Jesus was boxing with the devil and, you know, eventually you know, there, was the, there was the blow where Jesus, right, you know, right, and it makes out that Jesus was the one that overcame the grave in that context through a boxing match. No! Jesus, now, if this, sorry if this messes with your theology right now, but nowhere in Scripture does it say that Jesus raised himself from the dead. Nowhere. <laughs> Let me show you. I'm going to have to show you some Scriptures here because some of you are like, what? No, 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 this is important. This is important because we have to understand that not only the way Jesus lived, that he did what he did, not because of his divinity, but because of God on him. Because if, if he didn't do it just because God was on him, if he did it just because he's Jesus, then, then you can't do what he did. But in the, same way, in the same way the resurrection power, in the same way this dynamic now that God wants us to understand, we gotta, under, we gotta understand what came. You gotta understand the power that was released. You gotta understand that when Jesus finally led it triumphant, which he did, when, when principalities and powers were spoiled, when they were made a public spectacle of, you gotta understand what God did. What, see, God, it was God's signature. God's signature on this. God raised him up. God seated him. We've got to get this. Otherwise, we slink back into a religious pattern of thought that gets us nowhere. Devil, the devil wants to keep you entrapped in religious thought patterns that some preacher preached one time and it sounded right, so everybody accepted it, and it's actually devoid of the power. Forgive me if I'm getting a little loud, but man, this has been stirring in me. <laughs> Glory to God. So what raised? Let's look at scripture. What raised Jesus from the dead? Well, let's look at a few scriptures. Here. Romans chapter 6, verses 4 and 5. In the Amplified, it says, we, But we were buried, therefore, with him by the baptism into death, so that just as, now say that out loud, just as. That, that's another one of those important linking statements just as so so in what we're about to read next not only did it happen for him but just as it happened for him there's something for us have you got that okay so hold on to that just as Christ was raised from the dead by what the glorious power of the father the glorious power of the father or or the the, glo the glory of the Father. So what raised Jesus from the dead? The glory, the kabod, the weightiness, actually the prosperity of God, if you want to really go there. <laughs> I mean, this resurrection will reach into every part of your life. Finances too. If you, need a re if you need a financial resurrection, then don't, don't just think this is just a, about healing in your body. Man, this will reach into every part of your life and bring it and snap it in divine alignment. Just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, so we too. Are you hearing these linking statements? So we too might habitually live and behave in newness of life. Habitually live and behave like who? The, the resurrected Jesus. Why? Because, because you've got your resurrection body? No, 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 no. Because he does and he's poured out his Holy Spirit into you, the same spirit that was upon him, that, that is now to live on the inside of you. And as he's seated there and we're seated with him, there is a degree, a manifestation of the glory of God that is being poured out on the inside of you that you're now supposed to live out as his body. Now, now, now there's, there's no sickness in Jesus. You understand this. There's no strife in him either. I mean, if we're the body of Christ, then none, none of that stuff's supposed to be even functional. From now on, we're no longer supposed to know one another after the flesh, but after the spirit, amen. 
to personality stuff, just get rid of that stupid, stinking, horrible, nasty stuff. No, there's a, there's a divine alignment that's coming. Even in, even in the fellowship, you know, the, 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 the word of God talks about that fellowship, that divine fellowship. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus cleanses it. I mean, there is a divine fellowship. There is a divine alignment that is coming in line. And let me tell you something. The resurrection changes. When you get a revelation of this, it changes everything. In fact, in fact if we get to the scripture... It actually says about that, that, that concerning the love of God, the love of God on you, because it's so pure, because it's so right, it actually gives you the right to judge certain situations. To judge thus, that if one died, then all have died. There's a, there's a judgment that comes through the purity of the world. I mean, judge that sickness. By the resurrection power of God and what Jesus has done on the cross, I judge that sickness. Oh, come on. You've you, you got to get a hold of this. Whew. Verse 5. For we, if we have become one with him. Oh man, these, these statements roll off the tongue, but stop for a moment. <laughs> if we have become one. Echad. That's that plurality of one, that, that, that in him together, one. If we have become one with him, by, the, by sharing a death like, like his, I love the way the Amplified puts this, it's just so clear. A death like, I haven't looked into the message yet, but that's probably going like, to, but uh, we shall also be, there's another one of those link, linkage statements, one with him in sharing his resurrection by a new life lived for God. Oh, see, see this, this changes everything. It changes Monday morning. It changes how do you go to work. It changes how you interact in your marriage. It changes how you speak to your children. It changes how you, how you come before the Lord and say, God, uh, uh, use me more in 24. What does that look like? The resurrection will empower that in a divine alignment you possibly haven't even dared dream about yet. Oh, come on now. So, so none of the verses that we've looked at so far attribute... Jesus doing something in the grave to raise himself from the dead. He completely, see, the glory of what Jesus did was to completely submit himself to death, even the death of the cross. Absolute and complete, he had to, he sweat this out in the garden that he was yielding himself to the place where right now I can call on legions of angels, but once I cross that line, I can't call on anything. And it's going to be purely down to what I know of the Father next. I mean, that's total, total trust. So God raised Jesus, you see. See, the, 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 the genius of Jesus. There's, the, you understand, there's the Jesus, the Word, the Lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world. There's the genius of all of that, all wrapped up, and it's all in his name. It's all in the Hebrew. It's all beautiful. It's all wonderful. It all talks about the cross. It all takes, it talks about the plan. The genius of the legal ramifications of Jesus coming as man. The genius of this. The genius of the cross in becoming sin, but not doing sin. The genius of this. You see, Jesus became sin. He didn't just, some people talk about it, well, he carried your sin like, like it's, in a, it's in a backpack that you know, Jesus put on somehow and just kind of carried your sin. No, 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 no. He became. So, so the prophetic vision of Jesus from the Old Testament looking was, was when the children of Israel were dying, God said to Moses, put a serpent on a pole. Why a serpent? Because it's the prophetic image of what they would be looking at. This is all the way stuff, folks. 
And so Jesus completely yielded himself. The genius of this was that becoming sin legally qualified Jesus to go to hell, but not doing sin, sin did not legally give hell the right to hold him. Let me say that to you again. The genius of Jesus becoming sin was that it gave him the legal right now to go to hell as you. But not doing sin discounted hell's right to hold him. It, it wasn't understood by hell. If they had known, the scripture says, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If they'd gotten that, no way he's going on the cross and dying and going through, and going through that system. See, the devil knows every word of Scripture but doesn't have a revelation of any of it. Because a revelation takes light, and light was removed from it. So he can quote Scripture at you, but, but, but it's devoid of the light of it. And so, unfortunately, there are a lot of Christians. It's quoting Scriptures, quoting my verses, but it's devoid of light. It's devoid of the resurrection. Now, I'm a teacher of the Word of God. I love the Word. I love to spend hours in the Word. I get so excited, I lean back just about pass out many times. I do. I mean, that's my happy place. And I throw my hands up and spend time in worship and prayer and, and just go places in the Father just because of one little thing that's just exploded in front of me. I mean, I love that stuff. But let me tell you, there's no point in, in doing your verses every day and all your confessions and everything else if it's devoid of light. That, that's just not worth your time. It's just religious activity. Aren't we learning that? We should be. Pastor's been teaching us that over and over and over again. So God raised Jesus. Quick, uh, let me throw out a few scriptures. Acts 2.24, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death. Acts 3.15, and killed the prince of life, whom God raised up from the dead. Acts 4.10. I mean, actually, if you want to go into it, how many of you would think that the very first evangelistic crusade on the steps of Jerusalem by, by Peter... Not long ago, denying Jesus, cutting off ears, swearing, all sorts of other stuff. Now filled with the Holy Spirit, born again, tongue-talking, I mean, Peter, right? Moments ago, just shandala puste frando Sunday. <laughs> and he comes out, who would think that possibly if that guy can step out of the upper room, preach a sermon, and get 3,000 people saved on his first attempt, that maybe something in the content of that message might be worth listening to? Well, one of the, would it shock you to look at Acts chapter 2 and read that some of the central themes of that message was Jesus dying, going to hell, and being raised from the dead? That's the central core theme of the message. And it cut people to the heart. Glory to God. And so you've got Acts 10.40, you've got Acts 13.23, Acts 13.30, Acts 13.37. All the way through it talks about God raised, God raised, God raised Jesus. God raised him up. So Jesus had the right to go to hell, to pay the full price, the full punishment. And three days later, the legal requirements were fulfilled. I mean, can you imagine the screams in hell at that moment when the glory of the Father, I mean, I just hear this rumbling, raw power of the glory of God. I mean, just... And that body that was lying there, I mean, I don't know if you've been to Jerusalem and been into that little, you know, and, and just, I mean, it just, I mean, it's great, it's wonderful, but, but, but I want to, I mean, the power. I mean, it just surged, snapped. I, this, and this is what I want you to get. It snapped every cell into line. I mean, there's nothing 
that's going to disobey and not yield to that resurrection power in that moment. I mean, well, there's a scar here and a scar here and a, a couple of scars here and one here that on purpose now, it's not, God, it's not like, oh, God missed a few spots. And even there, there's purpose and there was teaching in the midst of all of that and so forth and so on. But Jesus is out of the tomb just for a few minutes. And Mary, I mean, she's midair on the way for a hug. He's like, whoa, don't touch me, Mary. I, I haven't yet ascended to my father or your father. There's some things I've still got to do. And we read in Hebrews 9, 10, 11, we see Jesus took his blood into the heavenly holy of holies. He's got to finish some stuff. He's got to cleanse the heavens. He's got to, Adam's authority where that stretched to all sorts of legal things that are still going down, still taking place. So she can't touch him, but then he shows up with the disciples a little bit later and he's like, now touch me. It still amazes me that there are times, even when Jesus stood there, at the last statements of Jesus, when you, get, when you go into the Great Commission, and it still says, and some still didn't believe. Why? Because seeing isn't believing. I mean, if you can stand there and watch Jesus go up into heaven and still not believe it, that proves to you that seeing it's not going to do it for you. You've got to come to a, a place of light, revelation in the Word that's going to change your life forever. So much so the 500 people standing there watching, only 120 are in the upper room. Now, I like to believe that they were hanging around outside and they got in the 3,000. I like to believe that. I don't know that for sure, though. But God raised Jesus from the dead. Now, quickly turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Let me read it for you again. For he made him who knew no sin. Now, he became it, but he didn't, he didn't know it. And you, you do a, a word study on that word, know it's a very, he didn't intimately do it. But he became it. That we might become something. That we might become the righteousness, which is positional, locational, geographical in the spirit, it is that place in and right with God in every sense of the word without sin, shame, anything right there in his presence. I mean fully. It was, he, it was, he became fully sin so that you could be fully righteous. He, he became everything that we were so that we, oh come on now, so that we could become everything that he is. Now, again, religious will, religion will not want you to say that. Oh, Pastor Chris, that's just gone too far. Well, then the Bible's gone too far. Because that's what it says over and over and over and over again. What was the point in Jesus? You see, for us, it's all about Jesus. But for Jesus, it's all about you. You've got to get a hold of that. And again, people are like, you can't say that. No, 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 I can because otherwise what's the point in him going through all of that? It wasn't for him. Now, there was a degree of it that was for the Father. There was a degree of that that was for the reconciliation of the Father and his children. Absolutely. But, but this was not to elevate Jesus. He was already in the highest place. But, the res but through the resurrection, I mean, that. <laughs> see, again, hell didn't get this. But, but the bounce that took place, <laughs> the depth that he went to just, just gave a propulsion, an upward propulsion of a much more that, that, that we, got, we got brought up on, that propulsion enabled what wasn't possible before for you and I to be there, to now be there. Glory to God. Because now legally, he's able to raise us. Hallelujah. Until the resurrection, now again, you've got to understand that when, even when we're in prayer, when we're doing things in worship, all of these things are affected by the point of the resurrection. Pre-resurrection, I mean, no one's saved no, no, one's, no one's actually in heaven, 
pre-resurrection, there's not been any pathway made for that to happen. Pre-resurrection, the prince of the power of the air is still functioning in all the authority that Adam gave him. Jesus has been, has been dealing with certain things through his ministry on the earth, but he's been functioning within the, within the bounds of the, of the First Testament and the legalities that, that enabled him to do that. And he would say things even to the people on the earth. Listen, I'm doing this, but you should already be doing this. This woman bent over. She's a daughter of Abraham. That's covenant language. You should already have sorted this out. So Jesus is functioning in that. But when it came to the point of the resurrection, it drew a line in the sand that changed all of eternity. And so there are certain things, things that changed at that point. There were certain, there were, there were, there were things that Jesus made a public spectacle of. Now, there are people on the earth today not born again that still authorize those things in the heavens. You understand, the principalities, powers, wicked spirits, and so forth and so on. There are people on the earth, there are rulers, there are kings, there are people walking around on this planet who's still under the Adam's old authority. But when, when you get born again, everything changes. And, and that those, those, those dynamics in the air, those functionalities in the atmosphere of this planet no longer have the same control over you. They want you to think they do, but they do not. The resurrection changed that. It snapped a divine heavenly alignment into place. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, and even to the point where Jesus actually went and preached to the, the, the Bible says the captives. And we don't have time to go into all that, but boy, it's an interesting study. I mean, Jesus went up and down and he went all over the place, man. He was doing everything he could to do everything that was necessary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now quickly go to Colossians chapter 2. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now Colossians chapter 2 verse 6. As you have therefore rece have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you've been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world. Now, the tradition of men and the basic principles of the world are always trying to work their way into church doctrine, always. And Paul's prayer was that, I, listen, don't, don't get cheated out of what I'm about to talk to you about next by those things, which are always trying to work their way in. And not according to Christ or the anointing. <clears throat> Remember, the glory of the Father is what raised Jesus from the dead, the anointing. For in him dwell all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him. I mean, you've got to just let that rest on you for a minute. Through your own works? No. Through the resurrection. Now, I know, again, I, again, I know we haven't had got our resurrection bodies yet. That's that final thing there. That's that last thing there. But the, but the Holy Spirit was sent as the guarantee of the purchased possession. That, that resurrection power is living inside of you. And by the way, you're not, ju you're not supposed to be the end user of that either. There is a flow that's supposed to not only restore you and enable you and strengthen you, but overflow you. There is a gusher that's supposed to start to rise up, a fullness for you, but then an overflow from you of resurrection power. So much so that at some point in the New Testament, the example was that the apostles are walking along. People would put them just as close as they could in, in shadow's distance. It was nothing really to do with the shadow. It was the proximity of the... <laughs> 
<laughs> the resurrection power that's, tri- st- that's literally, f- I mean, we've even got Old Testament, I mean, Old Testament examples where the bones still hadn't given out everything that they were supposed to give out. They threw a dead person down there and the dead person came back. Now, if that can happen in that context, how much more than you? <sighs> You're complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. In him you were also circumcised with circumcision made without hands by the putting off of the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Now listen to this, verse 12. Buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. And you... Being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him. We've got to keep seeing this, not not something that happened afterwards later on, that in the process of the resurrection, you were included in this. So much so that the Apostle Paul comes out with the statement in Galatians 2.20 and says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. But Christ now lives in me in the life which I now live. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He's so aware of this. He's so so vitally concerned with this. He made alive together, made he made he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, has he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them. That's for you now. Glory to God. Don't let that sickness mock you. Don't let it. He mocked them. Come on now. Hallelujah. You are complete in him, Colossians 2. Verse 10 says, Who is the head of all principality and power, in him you are also circumcised with the circumcision. That that cutting away of the old. When he raised Jesus, he raised you. When he seated Jesus, he seated you. We, We just haven't been willing to yield to that. Ephesians 1.15, for this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, the people of God, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer. Now, we all know Ephesians 1.17. Man, we can just about quote all of that through into chapter 2. But listen, listen now, because you, you can hear that and, and Praise God for the teaching on that and bless God for the, you know, taking your seat and praying this out and everything else and all of that wonderful stuff. I'm not taking away from any of that. Um, I, I don't know if you heard me a few years ago, but I'm Mr. You know, new breed from the old seed. I mean, that's just what came up in me for this church, that this would be a new breed from the old seed. We can't, we can't disconnect from that which has gone before and expect to do something powerful for God. We just cannot, but listen, 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 listen. New ears, fresh insight. Paul's just prayed the eyes of our understanding. I mean, this is what he's praying. See it fresh again. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. Now, now we just heard that a few minutes ago. Father of glory, this this is resurrection language. Jesus was raised by the glory of the Father. Now, father's fathering is different from just male or a father. The word father speaks to seed. The word father speaks to children. You're not a father if you don't have children. This is the father of glory. Come on now. There is a glory 
Bosa Cabrista Fanamashtikia Bondi. Hallelujah. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, of insight into mysteries and secrets, in the deep and intimate knowledge of him, by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light, so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you, and how this how rich is his glorious inheritance, his inheritance in his saints, his set apart ones. And so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in us for and for us who believe. Believe what? Believe this power. Believe this resurrection. Watch, watch, watch this as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength strength which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead. So So the light that we're praying about, the revelation that we're praying about, the flooding with light so that we can know that we can understand that the Apostle Paul is wanting to get through to us is was that which we're looking for, that which, we, which we're desirous of, that which we believe is going to touch this city again, that which we believe is going to touch this nation once more, that which we believe is going to go to the ends of the earth, that which we believe is going to raise the dead, that which we could believe is going to, that which, that light, that resurrection that comes was demonstrated in God by raising Jesus from the dead. That's the resurrection power that we're talking about. Which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him. The whole thing. At his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, above every title that can be conferred, not only in this age and in this world, but also in the age and the world which is to come. And he has put all things under his feet and appointed him the universal and supreme head of the church, a headship exercised throughout the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. And so now, we're this living, breathing, walking, talking manifestation of Jesus filled with the same power that pulled him out of hell and death. And we got a job to do. And we've got a we we've got vir, we've got virtue to work with. Not yeah. In, in thank God for the the fact that it's still earthen vessels, that the glories of Him. We get that. We understand that. Come on, we're coming up to some level of maturity to not be too big on ourselves on that. We understand it. It's the resurrection power. But he but that lives on the inside of me. It lives on the inside of you. It lives on the inside of your little ones. There's power. There's power. I'm telling you. I believe with all of my heart. See, see, we, it wasn't just a preaching a message tonight. I believe, with, I believe with all of my heart that there was a re- release of words and light that was necessary. You and I working together tonight, pull, pulling something in line. Working with, I mean, all of the words and the sermons and the prophecies and the, and the prophetic unction that pastor's been pulling from heaven and, and working all the prayer that's been taking place. I mean, this is not just filling up time. This is working, working something, working with something. God wooing us and then working, wooing us. And then from a place of intimacy, not works, Do you understand the difference of working works and then working from a place of intimacy? There's a difference. So all of this that's been taking place, all of this that's been transpiring, all of this that's been pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling. And and I believe tonight, 
I believe there's just another piece, another piece right now in the spirit, another piece by the prophetic unction of God, another piece that snaps into line, a divine alignment. And can, can I say this? But what better, what better place for that, the, a, a manifestation of that to begin than in your body right now? What better place and what better time than right now on a Tuesday night, the resurrection power of God, I mean, if there's anything that's still out of line, anything that needs to be snapped in, if there's one cell in your body that needs to just come in divine alignment, then what better time than right now? If there's, if there's mind games, things out of line in your thinking, then what better time and what better place than tonight for them to come and to be snapped into line, to come in divine alignment with the mind of Christ. If there's things out of place in your finances, then what better time and place than tonight for the resurrection power of Almighty God to invade and flood every part of your financial life and snap it into line by the glory, the prosperity of the Father. Oh, shakalabande for us. Come on, pray in the Spirit for a little while now. Pray in the Spirit. Sare boshtikine mistikia brosta falamandaro. Sikie barro bo sikine stande fan rosta kalabadande. Hallelujah. Oh, kama mama sikie bro se fan ama stikide rishte piatan droste. Come on, come on, lift, lift, lift a little here now. Lift a little now. Come on. Let let your ears hear what's coming up out of your spirit, because there's there's things I've been pulling on in your spirit tonight. There's things that Poroso, the Word of God, has been pulling on. There's Porosh de Kiebande Post defend divine alignments. Shikia Masto Pro Stefande Stikia Nete. E Pamando Rosta Fando Stolamandia Tane. Come on, we've been working this tonight in the spirit. Working with heaven. Working with what's been released out of heaven.